How are you doing, everybody? Um, of course, as she said, I'm Bill Manning. Uh, everybody in here, how, who's uh, familiar with JFrog and what we do? Uh, any hands? Excellent. Uh, for those who aren't and those people online, um, what we do is we call ourselves the Universal Repository Manager. What does that mean? So basically what it comes down to is we manage your binaries, the binaries that you produce, the binaries that you use. So in other words, if you're a developer and you're writing code, we handle the libraries, not the source code. When you build those builds, you take them, you can store them into Artifactory. Now, why am I here today? Well, we also call ourselves Universal Kubernetes Registry at the same time right now. That's the thing. In our latest version of the product, we've introduced Helm as one of the repositories that you can use. And uh, one of the things I'm going to talk about today is actually how to utilize that in a full CI CD manner. So, using in this case, I'm going to use using Jenkins. Uh, everything is hosted on AWS. And then the final deployment in the stage that I'm going to be showing you actually has to do with deploying to EKS. So, this is a perfectly applicable scenario for people who are using things like uh, web services. And we always say from code to cloud, or developer to deployment, or developer to device, you could put us anywhere. Uh, that's me. Um, and let's go on to like some of the products things are here. So like I say, we have Jenkins for our CI, uh, CD. We have Git, of course, for your source control. It could be any VCS that you want. Um, we'll start with our basic one, which is Artifactory. Of course, that's where the binaries are stored. Um, one of the things we also have is Bintray, which is a distribution platform. Uh, it runs on Akamai CDN. But now we've introduced distribution and Edge, which are two new product lines from our Enterprise Plus platform. And that allows you to roll your own CDN, so you can go multi-zone, multi-region in AWS. We're also going to talk a little bit about uh, X-Ray. So X-Ray is a way for you to do security and vulnerability scanning. And one of the things I'm going to show you is the importance of actually scanning things like containers. So we'll talk about Docker, and we'll talk about, you know, there can be stuff nefariously uh, involved when you create a Docker container, because sometimes you don't know. But also, too, you can actually scan from the binary level from the point of the developer on up, ensuring security. Um, other things we're going to show off really quick is also mission control. It's your way to actually manage the platform. Uh, Insight is our new thing for Enterprise Plus also. It's a way to quantitate and qualitate the CI pipeline you're utilizing from check-ins all the way to deployment. And then last but not least is access. But of course, the endpoint in this case is AKS. So whenever you're building Docker containers uh, and you know, deploying for like EKS and out into uh, web services, you know, one of the things that we always talk about, we show this slide, and you know, during the construction phase of your containers, down to your Helm charts, down to your deployment, and getting it out to the world, you can use our Artifactory platform um, across the entire way, right? Everything from the Docker container images that you're pulling in, to the dependency libraries, to the builds that you're storing, um, everything can be done in here. It's a way for you to have a system of record. And one of the things that we do is we always say metadata is king. And the whole idea behind metadata is, is that it helps you do things like remediation and things like that. So we're not just a storage platform, we're also a ledger. So this way you can see how you're performing, how you're acting, uh, where you can make adjustments when you're building your web services like you know, you're deploying out to say Kubernetes. Now, one of the things I'm gonna be talking about in the demo here is I'm gonna give you just an example of how we uh, can you know, do things here. So of course, here's Artifactory. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about an example. And by the way, at the end of this, there's a URL you can go try. If you want to download and try the platform itself, uh, running end-to-end, -end. Uh, the demo I'm showing here is readily available. You have it for five days. Uh, and it's actually, you can get a taste of what our enterprise platform is like. So the, the demo that I, I, would, I would normally run this demo, but uh, some of the container portions take a long time. Uh, but I'm going to explain to you what you get. So what I have in this series of Jenkins jobs, and this is a very, uh, a very usual kind of thing. So I have, uh, everything's queued off of each other, dependent, uh, you know, they're actually dependent builds. The first one I have here is a Gradle application. So this is actually my WAR, this is my web server that I'm gonna be putting into a Docker container. I have my Node.js front end, because uh, of course I have a web service. Next thing I'm doing is I'm actually constructing a container based on the dependencies that I had from the two previous builds. And I'm pulling them all from Artifactory. So the entire time we're doing this, I'm pulling from Artifactory. Now, when I create this Docker container, in this case, I'm actually using Artifactory as my secure Docker registry. So I'm actually storing that Docker container into Artifactory, and I can tell you all the contents of it, what's applicable, when it was built, and I'm gonna show you that also. During that phase also, I go through and I'm actually scanning that container and looking for any vulnerabilities, and I'm gonna show you one. Now, by the way, when you're running this, I'm gonna warn you here, for demo purposes to show off the, pro the product, it's actually probably one of the worst examples of a Docker container you can imagine. It's got everything bad in it. So you know, when you do a scan, you get a lot of results. I wouldn't recommend running it and using it as your example to run it live anywhere. 
Um, following that, we're actually constructing a Helm chart. So we're correcting the Helm chart so we can go out and deploy to EKS. And once again, we're actually storing that back into Artifactory. And then the next step that I have here is I'm creating a new thing called, we have called a release bundle. And a release bundle allows you to pull in that Docker container and that Helm chart as a single deliverable release. So this is a huge step for us. We've actually gone out now and have it so you can actually package different types together as a release, store it, and distribute it. And then lastly, we're going to push it out to my edge nodes. And the edge nodes are the ones I have set up in different regions. And then lastly, um, the, of course, the implementation of sending this out to EKS uh, for, you know, for usage. Now, if I were to run these, you know, if you're familiar with Artifactory and how we operate and how we work, then you know uh, that you know, one of the things that we talked about, I just mentioned here, is the fact that we have build information. I'm probably going to tell you right now it's going to ask me to log in. Um, but here we go. Like, I'll just show you some information that we store um, when using Artifactory in this kind of release. So like, here's, a, uh, you know, here's a Docker app. You know, in this case, here's the Docker container that I'm, I'm deploying. I can see all the levels uh, and all the layers that are stored in that Docker container. I can also look and take a look and see all the dependencies. So here's those two dependent builds that I mentioned before. So when I construct this, I actually know the contents of the container. I know how, you know, what, what layers that are there. I can, I can also log in, first of all. I can also go and look and show you all the environmental variable information. I can show you all the system information. And I see if there's any issues that are around this. I can also look at licensing, see what licenses are involved. So, you know, it, it, for a lot of people dealing with, some, you know, open source software and trying to figure out where it came from, does it fit your license dependency, this is good for governance. And my favorite feature is this, though. Um, I love being able to go in and actually do a diff between two Docker containers. So from a remediation standpoint, if I'm releasing something as a container application, you know, if something goes wrong, how do I remediate it? You know, what's a quick way for me to do this? Well, by having that system of ledger, all that metadata around this, I can tell you what's changed on the layer level inside that container. I can also tell you if anything's changed, uh, including in this case the build that's been going on. And then lastly, I can show you any system of variables that have changed. I talked about also, um, you know, we talked about for a minute, um, you know, if I did a security vulnerability scan. So using our X-ray product as part of the process, I was just given two minutes, so I'm kind of speeding up a little bit. Um, but you can see here where I found a, uh, a really bad library that I have here. It's inside a jar, inside a layer, inside of a build. And I can also trace it back inside and do more remediation efforts. Now, when we're building all this, how does it look? Well, part of the good thing about this is, is that when you are using Artifactory and you are using any sort of CI CD pipeline, we have plenty of plugins for those, for those operations, uh, including all the major CIs. But also, too, if you script your environment, we have our API and our CLI. So and when I'm building these out, like here's my groovy job that I did for the Gradle app. Um, here's the one that I did for actually the Node.js. Here's how I'm actually constructing the container. And if you look here, I'm actually pulling all the dependencies that I have here from Artifactory. And I'm storing this um, into Artifactory as a Docker container. But then what I can go through is I'm actually, from that build, I'm actually constructing my release. So we have all this code also, by the way. This is all readily available. And if you look here, before I was using the plugin, but in this case, I'm actually using the JFrog CLI. So you can actually customize um, the way you utilize Artifactory and all of our components, uh, no matter how you like it. So you have this flexibility to use us as kind of like a conveyor belt. It's kind of a base foundation for your CI CD pipeline where we provide consistency, simplicity for ease of use, and then last but not least is security. So having these all together and give you that ability to say, you know, what we talk about is release fast or die as our mentality, well, this is really the way you can utilize Artifactory to do this. Now, if you want to read more about this, by the way, and now here's a shameless plug. Uh, we have a book that we wrote, and uh, it's called uh, Liquid Software. Uh, it's all basically all about how to basically uh, utilize your environment the best way you can and have the best CI CD process. And that's all the time I have. Sorry, that was really fast, but if you get a chance, go to try it Thank you very much, everybody. Come on down. <laughs> Step into my office. Hi. How are you? Um, good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Well done. 
Thank you, guys. Um, so I just have one question this time. Um, sure. Can you give us a really quick overview of both the different types of artifacts that I can store, and then if you can do just a really quick overview too, because you mentioned both the difference between like a registry and a ledger. Can yes. you give us the quick highlights and the different kinds of artifacts that I can store that way? Yeah, absolutely. So the whole thing with uh, JFrog is, you know, we said universal. So everything from C, C++, all the way down to containers, Java, Node. Uh, we just introduced Go. Also, if you're a data scientist and a data geek like me, we now have R, so we now support CRAM. Um, so Python, you name it. And when I say system of ledger versus actually like artifacts and registry, is that with the system of ledger, it just gives you a way to, I didn't get a chance to show it, but you can use our pipelining with promotions, so you can actually have your repositories match your stages. So you can promote it, and by promoting it, you can see where builds are in the pipeline. So you can go from dev to staging to QA to production, and when you're done, if you have any sort of, like I said, remediation is always a key, and that's actually probably the biggest facet, is that you can go through and actually pull that information out and say, isolate it, come to a quicker uh, way for you to you know, go through, deploy, and build again. Awesome. awesome. Great, guys. Thank cool. you for having Bill, me. thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everybody.